birthday signs from my friends. Oh, here's all the shots I have to get for Uganda. <laughs> Meet Liz Billman, a sophomore at Indiana University with so much going on she can barely keep it straight. It's a cluttered life that only she knows how to manage. I know strangely where it all is and like I do try to like get it organized sometimes but um, it's hard. Like this is like a little to-do list. Like sometimes they'd work on these during class and then like these are what I make one at least every night before I go to bed and it literally has every hour of my day planned out of what I'm gonna do. Every single day I have to have that or I would go insane and make those during class when I get bored. <laughs> Liz stays busy working for a number of organizations, a leader in every one. Now I'm really involved with um, the IUSA elections. I have to do like campaigning at least five hours a week and um, I've got, so I'm campaigning for that along with writing press releases and like there's extra things like the debate and stuff I have to go to. She is also VP of Foundations for Delta Gamma and an officer in the Retail Studies Organization. The times it gets the hardest is when I remember I have schoolwork to do. <laughs> On top of everything else, um, that's when it gets really hard. Like, Liz isn't the only one suffering from self-inflicted stressitis. Numbers of students face similar situations. They keep going and just keep adding. And what is that doing to us physically, mentally, as a whole? And I worry about that with students. I think I, I think what we're missing here is uh, is maybe this uh, the lack of focus, the lack of concentration, and then. I think students will, at some point, you can only take so much. I mean, physically, mentally, I think students will suffer. When does the pressure become a problem? What happens is that this sort of short-term metabolic process that allows us to sort of get a burst of energy unfortunately becomes chronic in a lot of um, human society. So what happens is the student that may need a short burst of energy in order to study for exam, all of a sudden, does that to him or herself on a repeated basis, on a daily basis, then when stress becomes chronic, you get long-term elevations of cortisol, corticosterone, and then that can have repercussions for your health, such as suppressing immune function, um, disrupting your sleep, all sorts of behavioral effects that sort of were meant for the short term that are now chronic and therefore not, not good for you. The week before spring break, I had so much going on because I was trying to get everything done like I'm going abroad this summer and then I'm also taking a trip to Africa and so it's like I'm trying to get all that done too <laughs> like I was trying to do that before spring break and I like my stomach was hurting and like I felt like I was getting stomach ulcers and it was just like I was really dehydrated and obviously she has a lot going on obviously she's stressed out but I think she deals with it in really good ways. She gets sleep every night, like doesn't go out like all the time, so that definitely helps. I really have a lot of self-control actually, <laughs> so it never becomes a problem because I just kind of understand that it's still going to be there tomorrow, like I still have to do all this. This kind of self-control is hard to find at a college. Many students use drugs and alcohol to de-stress. Statistics show that up to two to every five college students are binge drinkers. What we haven't done is we haven't taught people how to handle stress correctly. We need to learn how to deal with our stress so it doesn't turn into distress correctly. Not popping a Ritalin because you stayed up too late partying the night before and you got a paper due in the, tomorrow. Not drinking alcohol. They fear it is too dangerous and may turn fatal. Alcohol and drugs are the biggest concern at IU. Suicide is a secondary concern because the suicide won't come without the alcohol and drugs. In 2007, 706 Hoosiers committed suicide. Ben Schwartzman was one of them. He took his life at the young age of 19. We see it happen a lot. You see it a lot around midterms, you see it a lot around finals, and you see it a lot at the beginning of each semester. The stress can be overwhelming, but there are ways to overcome it that are safe. The other thing about young people is you'll survive almost anything. So if you can just manage your life a little bit, you'll survive and you'll move on and you'll be perfectly fine. You guys have an incredible recovery capacity. Stuff that you guys do at your age would kill us. <laughs> You're good. Sometimes I worry about the college experience and what I'm gonna tell my kids I did while I was here, but um, I think as long as I get what I want out of my life and I'm doing what I want and it's because of what I've done here, then I'll be okay with it all.